these guys just got so much better. Hey guys, do you remember me getting super excited about SwitchBots? Well, we have another reason to get excited, it's SwitchBot API. But if you don't know what SwitchBot is, well, let me just tell you that I got really excited about the army of small robots doing the mundane tasks around the house, because they can. Now this is SwitchBot Curtain, or Curtain Bot. Come on guys, this is so much better name than SwitchBot Curtain. It's a Curtain Bot, and it moves the curtains for you like that and it takes only like two minutes to install and set it's brilliant and this is a kettle bot and i think you can guess what it does so anyway there's going to be two videos linked in here one by one if you're interested and want to find out what's so cool about these things go ahead but today i'm going to talk about api they've posted recently just in the new year information about the API which is split into two categories. First there is a SwitchBot API which allows you to interact with the cloud service. So you'll be able to use a REST request to access the devices and control them. Second type of the API that is available is direct Bluetooth control available for either HomeKit or via a Python script with Raspberry Pi. In this video I'm only going to talk about SwitchBot API because for the most part, usually Bluetooth is way over my head. So before I'm going to jump into the null dread, in the description of this video, you're gonna find all the devices that I've got and a little bit more information about them as well, uh, where to get them. But I'll show you how to control uh, curtain bots, how to control kettle bots or switch bots. But also I'm going to show you how to retrieve information from the uh, temperature and humidity reader and control infrared devices as well. In my <clears throat> In the linked article, you'll also find a link to the GitHub. So if you want any information going forward, you can always reference that as well. For now, let's jump into node and I'll show you a couple of clever tricks I did to make the process so much easier. So moving on to the uh, API, you'll notice that it's quite well described with examples, but I'm going to give you a heads up and show you how to implement uh, everything in node and how to make it quite smooth as well. But the first thing that you have to do is just uh, download the SwitchBot app, uh, go to the account once logged in, and preferences, so you go profile, preferences, and tap on the version of the app 10 times to enable developer options. This is where your token is going to be. And um, uh, I used actually this way to store the token. So I'm using global.set variable and it's set, uh, stored as a switchboard API. So I don't have to actually pass this token code in here, but I'm just referring to my global context. So if you're interested how to do it, just take a look at my tutorial series for uh, Noldred uh, for beginners. All right, first we're gonna start with actually querying it. So you have to pass the token as authorization header and query the devices. You're gonna use this uh, URL. It will populate the list of all devices that I have and to make it convenient, I'm going to save it as a flow device. So you can see I have all devices in here listed and I'm only going to sa uh, save the type, name and the device ID. Device ID is needed because we're going to be using this to control these devices. So that's how it works. And basically there's a small function in here that iterates through a payload. And for each uh, entry in here, it generates a new object that is later stored as my uh, devices uh, flow variable. Now I also have get scenes in the same way. It's slightly different URL. So you just uh, get a different URL. I'm passing the token as well. And for both of them, I have to use the get and make sure you ignore the payload, otherwise it will give you um, issues and uh, some error messages. So set that to ignore because you set everything uh, in that function node as it should be. So now that we have this set and we can start playing with it, let's try uh, to get statuses. So a status of the devices can be obtained by going uh, to uh, this URL. And as you can see, we need to get URL uh, in the URL, we have to get the device ID. And the way I'm doing it, and all that lists of the devices I've got in here, 
I look up the name of the device. So this is the same name that you would use in a SwitchBot app. And based on the name, I uh, retrieve the device ID and I use it here. So it's very simple. Now you'll have to, uh, you'll have to also change the uh, properties uh, to get. So as I mentioned, to obtain the status of it, let's go office, that's my thermometer. So let's try to get this. As you can see, I've uh, submit the meter office, sorry. That's the type meter and this is a device ID. And I get my body. Now each body is gonna be different for each device type. So for the temperature and humidity, I get my humidity and the temperature is Celsius. And if I gonna go for curtains, I'm going to get information about the curtains and that will give me uh, whether they calibrated, when they grouped, uh, moving and the slider position. And if I'm going to use white B, that's my um, uh, bot, you'll see that uh, uh, I get really just the power option, uh, whether it's power on or power off. Now, you know how to retrieve the status, so let's go to a direct control and that's split into device type as well. First thing that you have to do is change the HTTP request to post. Now, once you uh, change that, you'll be uh, considering what command you want to issue. Now, for the most part, more uh, devices are going to be responding to turn on and turn off. That's case sensitive, so be aware of it. But each device type is going to have their own commands. So in case of a bot, you also have a press. Now, how it works is basically you have to include a content type for this to work. Otherwise, it won't work. Now, there is a um, URL that also changed, so it ends with commands. And I use the simple script to find the device and uh, retrieve the ID, and then uh, use that ID in the URL. Now, what you have to add is the message payload, which contains this small JSON in here. It gives you a command, the parameter, and command uh, type. Now, this one and this one won't change in uh, width. Um, switch bots, uh, but commands obviously this is where you're gonna set your either turn on, turn off and press. To streamline this, it's automatically applied, uh, applied to that JSON so you don't have to worry about it. To control curtains, you'll notice that I still have turn on, turn off options, but there is a new uh, setting in here which is set position. Now I use the message payload as a set position and a couple of uh, here values to actually set the position. And how, is, how you read this is that zero it's an index and I'm not 100% sure what the index means but the zero works. Now FF, this is a default speed. There is also zero for silence and one for performance mode if you use this and 25 is a percentage. Uh, so in this case, the curtain is gonna uh, close to 25%. Now, in order to handle this from a single function, I've added this if statement that if the command isn't actually, um, what was it, a uh, set position, then it just uses turn on the, and turn off as if that was a uh, switch bot. So you'll see that that param is going to be set to default. Otherwise, if I'm going to use set position in here, then I have to provide the parameter and the parameter is set by the message topic. Okay, moving on, we have controlling infrared devices. And this is a little bit more complicated because you'll have to refer back to uh, GitHub to get the information about it. So if you're gonna go uh, to this table in here, notice that each infrared device has different controls. And this is something you'll have to look up first uh, before you can uh, create correct commands. So I would strongly recommend you to create infrared controls as scenes and then execute the scenes instead. You're gonna find it so much easier. But I'm just going to quickly walk you through as well. In a similar fashion, you still have got turn on and off controls, which will require the parameter to be set uh, to de uh, default. Now, if you're going to use a custom sample, custom sample should have a command, which is a name of the button that you're trying to uh, imitate and then parameter is going to be default and uh, customize it's going to be the command type which is a um, basically a custom controller from that table now if you're going to submit that then uh, you have to use this script to um, set everything correctly so if i have a custom if i don't have a custom command then i submit something like this otherwise i'll have to recreate everything from scratch and that's being sent back to the server so let's go through a couple of controls and see how they work. I have a bot set up in here, so when I press in turn on, it'll give me a position 
about the uh, inflammation. Okay, I could hear the body, but I don't have a body object uh, yet. Uh, so it doesn't give you a uh, reply directly in here. But if I'm gonna go to my control bot status, you'll see that uh, right now the bon bot is on. Now if I'm gonna turn uh, off, okay, I don't, I'm not going to get any reply in here. But if I'm gonna press the status of it again, you'll notice that the uh, power is set to off. And the same goes for curtains and the same goes for all other devices. It's quite responsive, so you shouldn't have any problems. Lastly, let's talk about scenes. And I have said that's going to be quite easy. And basically, all you have to do is specify your scene name. So in here, I have a scene, one scene, bedroom sound, that turns on my audio in the bedroom. And provide the name for that scene. The script will, based on that name, find the scene ID and it will execute that URL with that scene ID to execute this scene. And that's pretty much it. And that's so much easier than trying to create that custom ER controller. Okay, guys, you have to admit that was super simple. And thanks to that script, you don't even have to worry about the device uh, IDs at all. So if you are interested and you want to try it for yourself, just head to the description of this video. You'll obviously find the article and everything is explained there for you. You can read it and you can download the Node Red Flow as well. Now that I'm real and only master of the switchboards, I'll come up with some clever integrations for Node Red and home automation. So if you want to know what's going to happen with these next, Stay tuned. It's best to follow me on social media of your choice, because why not? You know how YouTube works. I'm not going to explain that uh, uh, for you. You've been probably told by so many YouTubers to subscribe, like, and no, I'm not going to do that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you've got any questions. And as usual, I'm going to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.